What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Booking Not Happy Show. Today is Monday, January 29th. Quick recap, we did not do very well yesterday. One in three, only win was New Mexico at home. For what it's worth, out of the last five years, I have had winning seasons in four out of the last five years. And overall, we are up this year. So a little bit of a, uh, you know, a down stretch right now, a little bit of a rut, but let's hope to bounce back and have a better day today. Got four plays for you guys today. If this is your first time here, welcome to the show. What we like to do is to try to give out $40, okay? If we sweep this card, I will select somebody randomly, and I'll cash app you 40 bucks. All you need to do to qualify is, number one, subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button right now. Number two, comment below, 4 and 0. Oh. Give us the good vibes that we need. And number three, like the video. And if and when we sweep, I will select somebody randomly. I'll cash app you 40 bucks. All right, with that being said, let's jump into today's plays. The first play we're looking at is going to be Houston traveling to Texas. Currently, Texas is favored. I'm sorry, Houston is favored by five points on the road. Houston currently ranked number four in one of the polls, 18 and two overall, five and two in conference against the Texas team who's 14 and six overall, three and four in the Big 12. Most recently, Houston uh, pretty much dominated Kansas State, especially in that first half. They won 74 to 52. And Texas is coming off a road loss, losing to BYU 84 to 72. Digging into this Houston team, um, you know, I mentioned they come off, you know, good, good win against Kansas State team, pretty much dominated from start to finish. Jamal Shedd led them with 17 points in the win. They are pretty much led by a trio of guards when you talk about LJ Cryer averaging 15.2 points per game, uh, Emmanuel Sharp averaging 12.2. And I mentioned Jamal Shedd. He's a three-year starter for them, averaging 11.7 and leads them in assists with almost six per game. According to Ken Palm, this team's a top-ranked team in the country, 14th in offensive efficiency, and they have the most efficient defense in the country. Um, so they really get it done on both ends, play at a slower tempo, 350th in tempo based on their pace of play. On the other side, looking at this Texas team, mentioned that they uh, most recently lost. They've got some good wins, though, over number 11, Oklahoma, and they also have beaten number nine, Baylor. Um, but they've got some questionable losses. They've lost to UCF and West Virginia. Um, they're led by Max Abmus, Abmus, whatever his name is. He's an Oral Roberts transfer, averaging 17.7 points per game, 4.3 uh, assists per game. So he's a quality player for them. He's getting up a good amount of shots. Uh, Dylan Dessou is also a good player for them inside. 6'9", senior, averaging 15.5 points, 4.3 rebounds. According to Ken Palm, this team is ranked 36th overall, 26th in offensive efficiency, 73rd in defensive efficiency. Our play here is going to be to take the home dogs here. Getting five points, we're going to take Texas at home here. Um, you know, Houston, while they are – arguably one of the top, if not the top team in the country. They've had some struggles on the road. Losses to Iowa State and TCU on the road. Um, you know, I think Texas is kind of right there with them, with those teams that they've already kind of lost to, and we're getting five points. So uh, that'll be our first play here. Give us Texas plus five. Um, you know, you also kind of look at some matchups here. Uh, Shed and Cryer are both kind of, you know, six foot, six foot one guards. It's a good matchup for a Texas team who also doesn't have very big guards and a miss and Hunter. They're both around six foot. So I think Texas matches up here decently. Um, I mentioned how Houston plays at a slower pace. Um, that should help Texas here to at least cover the five points. So that'll be our first play plus five Texas at home against Houston. Moving on to our second play here. It's going to be Duke at Virginia tech. All right. Most recently Duke had the win. Uh, as they barely, barely beat, uh, who did they play here most recently? Clemson, 72-71, real controversial call late. I didn't think it was a foul, but, hey, I'm not refing. On the season, Duke, 15-4 and four straight up, 6-2 and two in conference uh, against Virginia Tech, who's 13-7 and seven straight up, 5-4 and four in conference. Virginia Tech most recently beat Georgia Tech, 91-67. to 67. They covered in that game. Okay. Digging into this Duke team now, on the season, they're putting up 81.2 points per game, which is third in conference. They're shooting it at almost 48% from the field and 38.1% from the three-point line. 
Um, on defense, they allow 67.2 points per game, which is fourth best in the conference. Teams are shooting 43.2% against this team. Uh, most recently, Jared McCain led them with 21 points in the win against Clemson. Uh, he was hot from outside, shot it well. On the other side, looking at this Virginia team, okay, they uh, most recently, I, I told you about their win, um, defeating Georgia Tech 91-67. to And uh, on the season, they're putting up 74.7 points per game, which is 11th in the conference. Not great. Shooting it at 46.6% from the field. 36.6 from the three-point line. Defensively, they allow 68.2 points per game, which is fifth best in conference. Uh, so they are more of a defensive-minded team. Um, our play here is going to be to take Virginia Tech, another home team that's getting some points here. Current line is Virginia Tech at three. You might see it at three and a half on some of your books. Um, but I don't, I don't really trust this uh, Blue Devil team on the road. I think they get a lot of home court calls. Um, when you look at ATS wise as well, let me dig into it real quick here. Duke, you know, not as great when you talk about them being on the road, three, three and one on the road um, at home ATS wise, seven and four is Virginia tech. And uh, um, you know, Virginia tech tends to play well against Duke. When you talk about them playing at home against Duke um, over the last five games, they're four and one straight up against Duke at home and against the spread, they're five and zero oh against the spread in their last five meetings when they've played at home against Duke. So I don't trust Duke on the road. I don't think they have a very good inside defensive presence. Filipowski, you know, is pretty versatile, can pretty skilled offensively, but they don't have a whole lot of a uh, shot blocking ability. And uh, Virginia Tech's going to be hyped at home going against Duke. Um, give us Virginia Tech here plus three and a half as our second play of the day. All right, I've got a couple smaller games for you. It's a short card here. We're going to take a look at this McNeese State playing Northwestern State. This game is at McNeese State. Currently, McNeese State favored by 19 and a half. All right, let's dig into this one. Most recently, Northwestern State, they're looking to bounce back after back-to-back -back losses, most recently 79 to 68 to Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Cliff Davis leads them in scoring with 15 points per game, about three and a half rebounds. And uh, they also get contributions from guys like Ryan Forrest, almost 12 a game, and Braylon Bush, who averages 10 per game, and uh, leads them in assists at three and a half assists per game. As a team, this team's averaging 70.8 points per game, shooting 42.6% from the floor, 30.7 from three. Uh, not very good overall when you talk about shooting, including a very bad 66.8 from the free throw line. On the other side, looking at McNeese, you're talking about one of the better, uh, you know, mid-major programs in the country right now. They are coming into this one on a 13-game win streak, most recently dominated New Orleans 102-65. to Shahada Wells leads them in scoring 18.5 points per game, 4.5 assists per game, and 5 rebounds. He's one of the best mid-major players in the country, in my opinion. Um, they also get good con contributions from guys like Christian Shoemate. He's averaging 12.4 and almost 10 rebounds per game. And DJ Richards Jr., who averages 11. All right, McNeese is averaging almost 80 points per game, 49.2% shooting, 40.1 from three, and 68.5 from the foul line. We are going to take McNeese State here. Obviously, they're the better team, um, but, you know, you look at – Situations where a team might take another opponent lightly. McNeese is going to be, it's a long shot, but they are essentially fighting for an at-large bid here, okay? Only two losses on the season. They have some solid wins on the year. I believe they won at VCU. I believe they've won at Michigan as well. Out of the top seven offensive efficiency categories, McNeese dominant in all of them. 54% effective field goal percentage compared to only 46.9. Um, but this is really about also Northwestern State's, you know, lackluster offense. We mentioned how bad their percentages are. Three-point per shooting, 41.5% is McNeese. Only 30% is this Northwestern State team. So, you know, a lot better situation for McNeese here. Uh, McNeese actually has the number one three-point shooting team in the country. 
So I love them in this situation here. 19 and a half is a lot, but I don't see them taking this game lightly, this team lightly. Um, as I said, you know, they, they can't afford to blow a game here, especially against, uh, you know, Northwestern State. It would be a terrible loss. So I think they're going to come out firing here. I think they're going to come out with energy. They're obviously the better team. And uh, give us the uh, 19 and a half here, McNeese State at home against Northwestern State as our third play of the day. All right, moving on to our fourth play here. We're digging deep. We're looking at Arkansas Pine Bluff traveling to Grambling State. Currently, Grambling State is six and a half point favorites. All right, looking at Pine Bluff, most recently they beat Bethune Cookman but lost to Southern. They're averaging 82.9 points on 45.2% shooting, and they're giving up 85.4 and 48.3% shooting. They are led by Kylan Milton. He's averaging 18.7 and 5.2 rebounds, but their uh, second leading score is not far behind. Rashad Williams is averaging 17.7 and about two rebounds per game. Uh, on the other side, looking at this Grambling State team, um, they've got it rolling right now. Okay, They've got most recently wins against Bethune-Cookman, Florida A&M, Southern, and Mississippi Valley State on this kind of win streak that they've got. They're averaging only 65.6 points per game, 43.4% shooting, and they're giving up 71.2 points um, on 40, about 46% shooting from their opponents. They are led by Contavious Dozier, averaging 14.3 and 2.3 rebounds. Um, he's their main guy. They also get double figures from Antoine Burnett, who's averaging 10.6 and 6.7 rebounds. Our play here is going to be to take the home team here. Give us Grambling State, minus 6.5 at home. All right. Arkansas Pine Bluff has lost its last 15 road games following a road loss. All right. Giving you guys some kind of interesting breakdown stats here. On the other side, Grambling State has won its last six games against Pine Bluff. And uh, they have their last 11 games against conference opponents. Um, you know, they've produced a total of 144 points or fewer uh, talking about them playing at home. So I think they, they they obviously play better at home. They've had Arkansas Pine Bluff's number in general. Um, Grambling, I mentioned they've played well at home. They're 6-1 and one straight up on the season. And uh, Pine Bluff, 4-11 and 11 against the spread this season. Not very good. And so that's going to be our play here. We are going to take Grambling State, as I mentioned, minus 6.5 at home, uh, you know, on the road as well, Pine Bluff, 3-7. and seven on the road this year against the spread. So give us Grambling State as our fourth and final play, minus six and a half at home against Arkansas Pine Bluff. That's going to wrap it up for us today. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you'd like to qualify for the $40 giveaway, um, all you need to do is number one, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, two, comment below, four and oh, give us the good vibes, and number three, like the video. And if and when we sweep, I will select somebody randomly, I'll cash up you 40 bucks. As always, our motto on this channel is to make your bookie not happy. Tough day yesterday. Overall, we are in the plus, so let's have a better day today. Let's get it going. Good luck today, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next video.